Well, Josh, we're back to where it all started. Where's that? Tatooine. Tatooine? Yes. Whatever do you mean by saying Tatooine? (laughs) Well, we're back there. Don't you see? Look around you. Don't you see the big dune sea and... The barren Jenlin wastes? Yes. Mm. (laughs) Yes, this is pretty bleak. (laughs) Oh, wait. That's not us. No. That's the Mandalorian Chapter 5. I want to live vicariously. Come on. (laughs) So uh, this is Drawing Conclusions. I'm Jessica. I'm Josh. And we are talking about Chapter 5 of the Mandalorian today. And it does take you back to where Star Wars all started on Tatooine. We're on Tatooine. Now, I know some of you are going to say, argue with me and say, well, that's not where it started. It started on the Star Cruiser, blah, 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 Darth Vader. Okay. They were over Tatooine. But yeah. Come on. And and also, here's the thing. This, the, the original Star Wars trilogy is about Luke Skywalker, right? And the action... I would think so. ...really is... The catalyst for the action is really what happens on Tatooine. So, yeah, it's where it all started, okay? So yep. no arguing. All right, Josh, what did you think of this chapter of The Mandalorian? Well, I liked it. I was not disappointed by this at all. In fact, um, it's a little spoiler alert here. Actually, this usually do all contain spoilers anyway, so just a little heads up. It does take place on Tatooine. The start of the episode has a pretty sweet little space battle in which a rival bounty hunter is after uh, the Mandalorian. And, of course, the Baby Yoda character we still don't have a name for. I wish you'd just hurry up and name it. Like, I'm going to call you this from now on. His name is Baby Yoda. We don't need a different name. All right. All right. (laughs) Whatever. Anyway, so he, you know, out of his uh, his, uh, cunning and ingenuity, he's able to best this rival bounty hunter and blew him up which yes. is pretty sweet anyway but his ship is kind of crippled and shot up pretty good and so he's got to make the nearest planet and it happens to be Tatooine right which is awesome I was like when I first saw this I was like totally eh I wouldn't say geeked out but I guess as close as I'm ever going to get to being geeked out by that <laughs> so I thought it was pretty awesome no it was really exciting for yeah. I mean Tatooine obviously is a very critical um, you know, place in the whole history of Star Wars. Yes. Anakin's home, Luke's home. And um, it was really exciting to go back Countless there. Countless pod races. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just really saw the one. But yeah. So, I mean, it's very exciting to be back there. And it was fun, you know, to hear them referencing all the things that you yes. have heard them reference in the other movies and... um the landmarks. Well, I mean, yeah. this uh, whole episode to me was just a great callback episode to right. just previous Star Wars uh, film, right? And uh, television episodes, that kind of stuff. I mean, they uh, you get the same vantage point when he flies into Mos Eisley, right? And, you know, from like where Obi Wan Kenobi and Luke look at it when you're introduced to it uh, the first time in the original film. He walks down the street. And you're just like, huh. And he visits the same cantina they meet Han Solo in. Right. And even the way that the so the young man that he runs into who is trying to become a bounty hunter, right? He's trying right. to get into the guild. Um, the way that he's sitting and everything is reminiscent of of oh. Han Solo when you see him in oh, the he's, cantina. Oh, he's sitting right? in the same spot right. where he blasted Greedo and those guys had their Right. Meeting. And well, and he's got his foot up. Right? I mean, yeah, he's very right. casual and just, yeah, it just seems very... Yeah. I mean, yeah, the whole thing is just like... Callback Central. <laughs> right. <laughs> remember this? Remember this? Remember I know. This? I do remember that. It was cool. I will say I did like that they, they what they did with the uh, Moss Eisley area in this time around. It's a lot less lively than it was right. in original the original film. Um, you see he's walking down the street. You see a bunch of Stormtrooper helmets up on pikes, mm-hmm. which I was like, okay. So, I mean, obviously this is after the Empire has fallen, but it's like – yeah, the lawlessness didn't take long to, like, over on that stuff and get rid of them. Right. Um, also, in the cantina, there's droids allowed. So that's different. Yeah. <laughs> New droids ownership. Be- yeah. <laughs> droids behind the bar. Yeah, serving <laughs> drinks and stuff and <laughs> at the bar. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you can tell, like, some things obviously have changed. And right. I think that's uh, kind of cool. And so it's not just a big static thing. It's like, oh, it's always like this. Right. No, I think, you know... The times are changing. They kind of hit that place kind of hard. Um, 
Right, and without it being overly dramatic or right. overly intrusive into the rest of the episode. Right, it's yeah, just you, something you, you notice. get a sense that something is different. This is the post-war, right, post-fall of the Empire world mm-hmm. um, that we're looking at. And um, this was, I thought I agree, it was really good. Um, I really liked Amy Sedaris's character. Yeah, in she this. was funny. Yeah, she was really great. You know, it's interesting because I've read a couple of things where people have said that they felt like this episode was really weak and um, that it wasn't a very good episode. And read some things where people were like, oh, I wish that, you know, it seems like the episodes are getting worse. The, I you know, disagree. it's not as good as the first two <laughs> or the first three. To, to me, chapter three still stands out as yeah, like the best it's so far, the, it's the most the high exciting. Point. Right. right. But it's interesting that people feel this episode isn't as good as chapters one and two. I really feel like chapters one and two, I, not that they were bad, but they were, a, you know, they were really foundational kind mm-hmm. of slow start, slow burn episodes. Right. Um, whereas I feel like these, the the later ones, chapter four and chapter five have been we more, up. yeah, more interesting. There's been a better pace to them. Um, right. I mean, what uh, do you think? Uh, well, I think, you know. I agree. I, I think the pacing has is better, has gotten better throughout the season thus far. Yeah. Uh, I, I just I like the little details that uh, Dave Filoni um, used in in this episode in particular. You're meeting the young bounty hunter who's eager to really make a name for himself. You see him. He's holding a coin in his hand, and it's a Republic credit. You know, it's gold and shiny. It's got the Rebel seal on it, and it's like. So you kind of get this intro. I mean, like all the stuff he's wearing is new. Like the binoculars they trade to the Tuscan Raiders right. are new, you know. And so this guy's got money. So he obviously hasn't been out there in the outer rim very long. He came from the Republic, and yeah. you know, wanted to go out to the frontier and be a bounty hunter. You know, right? Well, it's one of those things where it's like you can learn a lot about a character if you pay attention to those kinds of details, and then you yes. don't. Um, have to go into all this exposition like oh yeah. here's What's who his I am story. You know, yeah right which i think um well that's just bogsville right there right it just slows yeah everything it just bogs down. down the the writing bogs down the story and the pacing and so it's it is it's really smart to design you know the um the characters in such a way that you can tell a lot about them just by looking at them and by the details that they incorporate into um the character yeah i agree um, I did like that scene, you know, referencing back to the uh, the sand people. I thought that was actually pretty funny. Yeah. You know, <laughs> ordinarily they, they shoot at them and you know, there's a fight or whatever, or lightsaber chopping and women and children dying. <laughs> well, so this is, this is a nice... They, they kind of traded with them like they, yeah. you know, that was kind of cool. This is a nice thing for me. So like if the Mandalorian were just, if it were nothing more but callbacks and, oh, look, we're rehashing stuff that, you know, we're right. going to the same places. You've seen all this stuff before. You know, we've seen some new places. We've return, re, now we returned, you know, to a place that we're familiar with. But in this place that we're familiar with, we've seen new things. We've seen the way that it's changed. And then we've learned something new about the Tuscan Raiders, the, sound, the sand people, right? It's like, yeah. if you're not going to add to the mythology or to the knowledge of the universe, you know, the, then what are you what's doing? the point of right. having the story? And so for them to push it that way, I, I appreciate it, you know, to have do something different than, like, show us the scene that... <laughs> Is you know this show this these people this civilization that's this well known thing in Star Wars to you know oh nostalgia callback but then do something different with us or give us some new information about that I, I agree I, I like that it had purpose yeah and it was pointed and not just like look what we did kind of thing right I I really enjoyed that a lot so but you learned something new about the sand people but you also learned something about again you you learned that he had new binoculars so it was a little bit more insight into the to the character of the other. Um, you know, the fledgling bounty hunter. And then you also learn more about the Mandalorian, right? Because he can communicate with the sand people. <laughs> right. Use like hand gestures and uh, kind of like a sign language. Right. So to speak, I guess. So, right. Yeah. That's what they, yeah, totally. It was sign yeah. language. So I just, I thought, you know, I really actually really enjoy this episode. Yeah. Um, and then the bounty they're going after is this uh, hardcore assassin from, you know, the the inner territories is made this out this way. I believe that's, I think that's what happened anyway, but, uh, well, I don't know. She used to work for the huts. So I think, right. It's one of the, they were saying she worked for the huts as an assassin or whatever. I think she worked for, I think that was one of them. I think they said a few different ones, Yeah. whatever. Anyway, she's pretty notorious and, um, played by Ming Na Wen. Right. Who was uh, agent may from agents of shield and the voice of voice Mulan. of Mulan. And then, 
Joy Luck Club and other things. Anyway. Yeah, lots of things. Anyway, <laughs> so she's in this uh, briefly. She's the target of their uh, of their bounty, whatever. Is I don't know. Win and Joy Luck Club. No, I have to go look that up. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, she's the bounty target, and um, you know, you get you get to see right away that she's a very capable assassin. She's a great shot. Right. She set a nice trap. To lure out any other uh, would-be pursuers, right. and uh, it doesn't mess around. And so, again, it's another one of those things where it's like you see someone's capabilities just kind of like by w- what they're doing on screen right. and not like a big story. Like, I can do all this. Right. Check it. Here's my resume. It's in triplicate. <laughs> You'll enjoy this part. Um, it's, you know, it's it's cool. I like they did that. You know, they, they eventually capture her. and um, Yeah, after some... Hand-to-hand combat. Some fisticuffs and all that yeah. stuff. And yeah, and but then even like the way that she, um, you know, is able to turn the... I wish I... Why is his name? The, the other bounty Tora hunter. Cali, Toro Calican. Toro. I think Anyway, right. so how she's able to turn him against the Mandalorian and... Right, because he had to go off and retrieve a ride because his got shot. Right. So... I don't... Anyway, so... Um, I just thought that was really, you know, that, again, told you something about her. She's not just good at fighting. She's smart, right? Right. She's manipulative. (laughs) Right. um, Devious. Um, But then it also was this great thing to tell you about him. He's just, like, totally... Inexperienced, cold? yeah. Well, no, I well, mean, like, yeah. then he kills her, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. Very cold, very out for number one. You know, so not only betrays the Mandalorian, but then kills her. Right, I mean, you get a level her. of ruthlessness right. there. It's definitely like a, a, well, there's truly no honor among thieves kind of moment. Yes. In the series so far. Right, because, right, like, he, I mean, you definitely get the sense that he doesn't care about money. I mean, obviously, he, say, he states that a few times, but it's like, you kind of see why he's got, like, new currency right plus a bunch of other stuff that you find out at the end of the episode that's like this guy's got money what's he doing this stuff for pride yeah he's I mean, a rebellious you know kid from a rich family <laughs> i mean you yeah. know that's pretty upstart <laughs> youth <laughs> typical thing yeah. um but i also liked how this man uh, this episode contrasted the way that that toro was with the mandalorian right right because again, so the man, you know, they're bounty hunters, and bounty hunters obviously have very bad reputation, right? And they're thought of as being, hmm. you know, more like Toro, I think. Scum and villainy, <laughs> right, right? You know, um, but again, with the Mandalorian, you see him, um, you know, I mean, sure, he's tough, and he's killed a lot of, you know, people so far in the show and stuff like that. But he right. had plenty of opportunities. To, right. to 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 betray this kid, to not live up to the deal that he made with them. Right. Like if he were just like, oh, I just got to get money and get out of here or, or whatever. You know, he could have, he had an opportunity to kill both of them, take whatever they had on them, go back and get Baby Yoda and hop on the <laughs> Yeah, get your repaired and ship and bail. Yeah. You know, but he didn't do that because he made a deal with this guy. And so he right. has, he does have his own, you he's, know, moral system and honor. Right. He's got a he's code of honor to, for sure. Right. Yeah, because he could have greased this kid at any point or just walked right. away from the deal and said, okay, kid, have fun getting shot out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> right. Because that's what's going to happen. So, yeah. And then uh, the ending of the episode, I thought uh, uh, Calican you know, betrays him and learns that um, the Mandalorian shot up, was it uh, Navarro? Navarro, yeah. Navarro, yeah, with all the other Mandalorians and uh, took a, a target, a bounty target. Right. Obviously, and so he goes and puts two and two together because he saw the the little guy back at the hangar bay when they met up, and they have a little mini shootout that doesn't last very long. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And uh, you know they 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 take off. You know, gets his his ship pays. Um, what's that actress's name? Amy Sedaris. Yeah, right. And they split. But this Asian this this episode ends on kind of a cliffhanger. Well, not really a cliffhanger. What would you call that? A tease? Mm-hmm. Kind of a sure. tease? Yeah. So you see the uh, vanquished body of uh, Ming Wen's. <laughs> vanquished body. That's vanquished. the only way I've ever heard that before. Well, she's dead. Anyway, <laughs> laying there in the sand where they found her, and um, you see some feet walking up to her. You know, they don't show who it is. They don't even show up above the knee. And 
So who, what, did, what did you have a guess? Do you have a thought? I, I personally don't have a thought. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, is this Boba Fett? I'm like, mm, maybe, but why? <laughs> so what I wrote was like the sound is the same as the sound you hear when he's like approaching in, in another movie. You know, it's like the same. They thing. have like spurs. I, they had a spurs kind of sound. Yeah. It would be, I mean, you know. That would be kind of cool. That would be cool, you know. Well, it would give a lot of Star Wars fans some nice closure and yet another cool callback to a character who didn't get their due, right. frankly. Um, you know, a character who was on screen in two movies for like five minutes and had like a handful of lines, like three. Well, I mean, but here's the thing. It's like he was never meant to be this like fan favorite character. It just is that's how. <laughs> that's what happened. That's just how it ended yeah. up. You know, and I don't think he needed to be a bigger part of the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi when you think about the stories or whatever. But no. but he has become like this, you know, I mean. He's hugely, a fan favorite. <laughs> right, yeah. Like this huge character, like fans love him and, they, you know, there's tons of merchandise around him and stuff. Well, his armor, like, was the first time you get to see Mandalorian army armor and it was right. so cool looking. Right. You know, very mysterious. So, I mean, so it would be cool if he brought back or... If someone's wearing his armor and then you find out a little bit more about what you know, happened, like, yeah, did he get snacked on pretty hard in that? Well, pit or? <laughs> if the expanded uh, universe is to be believed, he blew his way out. Yeah, but which would be awesome. The expanded universe is not canon, though. So it'll be interesting to see if they do anything with that. Or if it's somebody completely different, has no relation to it. Right. They're just teasing us, you know. Um, so, I don't know who it is. Back to it the next episode, or if we have to wait. Right. I I think it would be cool if it was Boba Fett, but I wouldn't be upset if it wasn't either. So, yeah. I'm just I'm just interested in seeing where they go. I'm enjoying the ride thus far. Right. I think they've been doing a really good job. Uh, visually, this episode's just as good as any of the other ones. It's really nice cinematography. Yeah. Great visuals. Um, the set pieces were great. Action set pieces. Uh, I also wonder if um, uh, the assassin that I can't remember her name either, Ming Na Wen, plays is also going to be permanently dead because that was pretty quick. But you never know, right? If she just was shot and injured, I was thinking that too. I'm like, right. is she really dead or is she just injured? You know, right? Um, it's a pretty quick um, cameo, cameo <laughs> for for somebody like Ming Na Wen, and it, right. it would be to me, it's kind of a waste of her. Honestly, I would think so. I think so. Yeah. And of her character, it's like we would. I would like to see more see of more her. Of that. I, I so I hope she's just injured. <laughs> and that, right. You know, but we'll see her again. But we we sees, shall see. We'll, we'll, yeah, who knows? Anyway, All right, Josh. So tell us about this picture that you did to go with the review. Well. Uh, I like the, that they included the speeder bikes or, you know, these ones are known as swoop bikes for the Uber dorks amongst us, myself included. Um, so I, I like that part of the show that they're riding across the, uh, the dune sea and the wasteland and stuff. Right. And it just looked really awesome. And so I wanted to capture that. And I did it on, um, the tan tone paper instead of gray tone that I've been using for previous episodes, simply because of Tatooine and all the sand. Yeah. And so I thought that would look cool. I put the twin sons in the background and, you know, just had a lot of a lot of fun with it. It was, it was a good time. It turned out really nice. Thank you. All right, Josh. So what should they do now? Well, if you've not done so already, hit the notification bell and subscribe. We love that. Yes, we do. Uh, also, leave us a comment. Tell us what you think about these episodes thus far. Favorites, likes, dislikes, that kind of stuff. Um, and share it with uh, friends on social media. Oh, thanks. 